Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Science Thursday in today's episode we're going to take a look at super capacitors so let's dive right into it so capacitor you have to understand before you understand super capacitor is just a simple power component basically in your circuits is generally stores power sometimes dc power sometimes ac power sometimes for a small while sometimes for a long while so it is a power component and there are multiple types or uh, types of it obviously and these are generally the symbols that are used to uh, you know show them now on top of that uh, they are what we call direct energy storage system now what does that direct means is simply when electrical energy comes into the system as in the capacitor it stores it as is basically there is no what happens in your battery where energy is come uh, you know converted into chemical system when that chemical energy is reconverted then you get the electricity out that does not happen in a capacitor to understand this much more clearly think of it this way capacitor is the capacitance of a place now you can create a capacitor by yourself all you need is a two metal plate that uh, you know separated by air gap so that's what uh, simple about capacitor that inherently that's all it is now of course there is a lot of uh, chemistry going into it but chemistry is not changing like a battery so that's what it is it's a simple power device which sometimes uh, you can see some things like this this big capacitors these are generally done to for what we call power factor correction capacitors uh, generally you can find things like that in substation electrical substation to smooth out the power grid many of these are available in either your motors to you know reduce its power factor uh, almost 100% of electronics uses this only some electronics is it that does not use capacitor so the idea of super capacitor is kind of a misnomer like super capacitor is basically more advanced design it generally has more surface area in her, uh, you know translating into more capacity now the reason why people call it super capacitor is that all the electrical design electrical circuitry was built for capacitors so if you introduce something that is new and you still call it capacitor the problem is people might you know interchange them and their behavior pattern is far enough that this should not happen to you know make everybody's life simple they simply say capacitor and super capacitor that's why you can still buy capacitor it's just that electrical circuits have different needs for that reason then like okay we're going to classify it differently so you don't mix them up so you have to understand this like a capacitor also stores energy this on the other hand stores much more of it now batteries as many of you are familiar with uh, is generally have what we call cycles as in how many time it can go uh, you know from charging to discharging charging to discharging now every time you are charging it you are giving it one cycle the moment you you know remove it it's discharging it does not matter whether you have a load connected to it or not so when you do things like that you will find out lead acid battery generally has 1000 cycles as in 3 years of life span if you are doing one cycle a day you can go 3 to 4 or 5 if the plate is super thick you can get a much longer life span and when you're talking about lithium ion it generally has 5000 to 10000 cycles that is on the ultra upper end that's not normal normal is 3000 but 5 to 10000 is generally trying to be utilized in your car batteries that's why your car battery does not die in next year same way your mobile phone dies but these puppies they have cycle lives of millions multiple millions so do not worry about them uh, running out of cycles basically even if you are cycling them multiple times per second you will still need a uh, like you know 2 to 3 years to you know completely waste their cycles so they are very long lasting now many of you are familiar with lead acid batteries that are generally used in your car now if you know how to charge those you will realize that it takes long time to charge like it could take upwards of 2 to 3 hours to charge it from 0 to 100 however while discharging that uh, the charging cycle is generally denoted on your battery with uh, character c discharging a battery is generally very powerful as in you can discharge your car battery upwards of 800 amps that's how lead acid battery generally turns your uh, basically self starter 800 amps is a no joke like inherently your battery only has uh, like you know uh, 50 60 amps of capacity so to discharge 800 amps that you can understand like if it can absorb even 400 amps it should be able to charge in few minutes but that does not happen because c and d is not proportional this happens with the lithium ion also in case of lithium ion the d is not very big however the c is better but still the gap is still there your c is generally two or three times smaller than the d so problem becomes like you can 
discharge a, you, you can drain a lot of power from your battery system but you can't charge it as quickly as possible so this uh, translates into you having a real world electric car that if you drive at full force like you know and uh, you will turn out that it you can drain the battery from 100% to 0% in upwards of let's say uh, 2 hours but to charge it from normal system it will take uh, many 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 hours even with three phase system with the active cooling system and all that it still takes half an hour to charge so the c and d is not balanced in capacitor is exactly balanced perfectly balanced so that allows it that simply means if you have super capacitor and if you have the energy you can charge it in an instant now of course not mathematically instant i'm just talking like less than a second less than a minute or things of that nature now super capacitor generally are also becoming much more uh, talked about subject so there is some classification that there is double layer there is pseudo capacitor because capacitor does come with some consequence that people are trying to merge capacitor with batteries so that's why you have pseudo capacitors so generally super capacitors are kind of awesome things but be mindful they are very low voltage as many of you are familiar with the cell architecture used in almost every battery generally each cell has a voltage so let's say your lead acid could have voltage of 1 1 volt to 1.8 volt and your uh, nickel hydride would have 1.5 to 2 and your uh, lithium ion could have upwards of 3 volt to 4 4.5 volts so when you are talking things like that, this puppy can only go up to a few uh, volts, three, four, like uh, four is also pushing it. Generally, they are at 2.5. So be mindful. It's kind of low voltage. So what are the benefit of this sort of thing? Now, let's say you replaced your car battery with supercapacitors and you can buy them. Like right now, you can just go and buy them. The benefit of it is that they charge almost instantaneously. So when uh, the ingress current happens, when you're like basically a starter behaves like an alternator and it charge, starts to charge the system, it's fully charged in a few seconds. It's like done, charged, absorbed done no problem now that itself uh, may be a big deal for uh, not a big deal for car battery but imagine that used for your uh, let's say electric car imagine charging your electric car in flat out few seconds F few seconds flat out F flat out you just connect the system and boom it's charged done go so that is a very very crucial aspect then comes to the fact that battery no matter what you do you can only push like i told you like practically we only achieve three to six thousand ten thousand is like mathematical this puppy practically achieves 1 million so there is no comparison in lifespan like your uh, normal car electric car could easily last 30 years the motor itself is very simple if specifically it's used uh, what we call uh, induction motor it's gonna last for decades and uh, electronics you can replace it but uh, battery itself will only last for 10 years 15 years at max so but capacitor could last upwards of 30 years well-built one now be mindful super capacitor by the, their nature is dc uh, as i already showed you in the last uh, slide that there are capacitors that is used in ac line for power factor correction those are different from this you cannot use a super capacitor on ac system it's only dc now to give you a mathematical context how much energy like if you are familiar with the joule calculations how much joule a capacitor has just multiply that with 100 you will get the capacity of these puppies super capacitors are kind of very powerful so if this is so amazing is there any consequence to this yes obviously the first consequence is low voltage that simply means if you want to build a practical battery bank you have to use a lot of them now the more you have the more problems you will end up getting it's it's a simple people don't want to have like 600 cells 800 cells 900 cells in their car you, it's just problematic to deal with like nothing physics is not telling you can't do that you can do that with a million cells but you know you want to simplify the operation that is a big problem now on top of that this graph should give you a very clear idea of what's going on now this on this end we have power density basically size of the battery on this end we have what we call uh, uh, power density as in in terms of how much uh, capacity like this is density and this is capacity so you can easily see we have lead acid very low then we have nickel cadmium battery that is generally your rechargeable battery and on top of that we have lithium ion now super capacitor does not have the capacity in terms of uh, basically intensity wise uh, of lithium ion what does that mean simply means if you are making a battery that has to fit in a specific place as in one liter let's say that volume is one liter in one liter you cannot pack too many uh, too much energy using super capacitor however if you have weight limit as in like let's say 50 kilo that is your limit not a size it could be of any size but weight is limited super capacitor generally has more sometimes um, almost same as lithium ion other times even more so that's why it's a bit offset capacitors are a bit offset 
now that itself may be an issue for a car but not for a truck or a bus so why not people use it everywhere uh, well it also has what biggest hurdle of the system is high self discharge what does that mean think of it this way if you charge a battery no matter what it is be it lead acid be it nickel magnesium be it uh, lithium ion it discharges over time now it discharges over time this discharges instantaneous the moment you disconnect it because uh, no chemical uh, changes have taken place it's not permanent it is going to deplete over time now that depletion is happening in every battery every system there is but those will deplete over let's say month to a year these will deplete in days so that is very uh, crucial so if you actually want to use them you have to have a rechargeable battery that's just there to you know slow down the self discharge rate so that these three thing combines does a kind of hurdle uh, you know hurdle progress so what we can expect in the future now think of it this way it is the best add on there is now you can add it on to your normal diesel truck now you're like wait what's going to do in diesel truck you you can install what we call active uh, you know kinetic energy recovery system basically uh, is generally used in f1 nowadays it's being used more and more in uh, commercial applications also where you where you apply brakes it does what we call regenerative braking and it stores the energy that uh, you know uh, you're going to waste instead of friction it's storing that energy electrically now if you dump that kind of energy in a battery no problem but batteries are very 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 heavy so when you are talking about the battery weight itself that is going to penalize your uh, payload capacity so you don't want like you know very heavy thing however uh, capacitor is light and not to mention because batteries have cycle limitation you have to change battery upwards of 2 to 3 uh, days because every time you are applying brake you are you know changing the cycle for this reason using capacitors are preferred and capacitors have lot of capacity in terms of amps how many amp you can dump into a capacitor there is no comparison like there are capacitors that can absorb upwards of 1 megawatt pulse so be mindful like if if you are apply brake and like it dumps lot of energy you don't need to condition it a capacitor can directly absorb it condition applied is you know normal temperature is not like you put a capacitor at 100 degrees celsius it's not going to absorb that energy it's just that within operational parameter you can build a capacitor bank that can absorb lot of power now what does that translate for our truck driver translates into better mileage simply because every time it's applying brake it's uh, recovering some energy that energy is being dumped back into the system when you are accelerating meaning you are uh, you know uh, your engine usage is going down little by little because from um, getting a heavy thing moving takes a lot of energy like maintaining the uh, inertia is not that difficult but you know starting that inertia that takes time and energy that energy is coming from capacitor that you would have wasted from breaking anyway so it kind of uh, they are quoting upwards of 30% uh, fuel uh, better fuel economy but let's say practically you will in real life you will save 15% on your fuel balance then add on terms of life this is very prominent in electric cars and soon in next 3 to 5 years you will start seeing them in every car basically every time you are applying regenerative braking i told you you don't want to waste cycle on your battery the regenerative braking energy will directly go into capacitor and capacitor will uh, apply that peak voltage uh, peak amperage during acceleration benefit of that because that peak that's capacitors you know home yard capacitor can handle peaks very well but batteries cannot so either you build a battery that is very big so it can handle the peak or you have to have active cooling or not to mention it will degrade the battery so you will that spike that happens whenever you are you know drive the accelerator if capacitor is uh, taking care of that your battery will be safe so even though you are adding weight to your battery banks your battery bank will last longer and not to mention you will get better range simply because that energy cycle is happening much more efficiently so it's a very good for uh, electric cars then we come to the stability now as i mentioned that capacitors are already used in power grid in, uh, you know to ma- balance power factors but as i already told you you can only use it in dc they do provide a very very capable energy storage for millisecond shocks so basically every time a system changes uh, like let's say you are going from uh, one power plant to another power plant there will be a shock every time like let's say some big industry starts their big engines or whatever they have it there will be a shock now these spikes are millisecond and spike the reason why you don't feel these sort of spikes in your day to day life is simply because when these sort of spike goes to the generator that is spinning in the you know coal power plant or hydro power plant there is a lot of mass connected to the system like that steam turbine that is spinning that is uh, you know 500 tons 2000 ton kind of turbine so inertia is keeping uh, handling that spike now when you have solar where the spike goes to in that place these sort of things system can help us stabilize the grid 
so it's kind of very useful now can it replace battery that's the final question can it replace battery yes china already did this now if you have seen my last episode about uh, trolley buses you must have realized that electric buses while practical the problem is they are very heavy and they waste a lot of energy just moving themselves basically three to four ton is the battery weight so you are wasting a lot of energy now capacitors even though they are lightweight uh, what china did is like they removed the battery size they removed battery to only to have enough for you know auxiliary power unit and like you know i did say the capacitors leak power so to make sure the they keep topping off the capacitors and capacitor is the main power source now the capacitor will only provide uh, provide enough power for 10 kilometers they have bus stop every five kilometers now what they're gonna do when the power runs out they have this sort of overhead uh, power collection system benefit because capacitor can charge in few seconds every time uh, the bus driver st goes, you know stops and connects the pantograph it already charges the system so every bus stop let's say is uh, five kilometer away they're gonna charge 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 and since uh, capacitors have a uh, one million cycle lifespan this is gonna run very long and it's already been successful that's how they are doing it like instead of having battery because battery cannot absorb charge at that rate and not to mention it's big heavy bulky and not no long lasting this provided a very good uh, bridge solution if we ever figured out a very very good battery system we will not need this but at this time the way things are going super capacitor may reach there before uh, you know lithium iron is pushed any further because be mindful lithium has let's say on a chemistry on a physics and chemistry level this much power we are already here we can't really push it that further so whenever you hear new technology new uh, those technology are for safety mainly second uh, generally to improve the recharge speed which again the best case scenario you still can't compete with this and uh, you know to increase the lifespan things of that nature so safety uh, you know rechargeability and uh, lifespan these three things are where the money is being spent but not like you can't expect uh, you know futures battery to have 50 times more power it's not gonna happen because now of course new chemistry comes along something new comes along maybe but lithium is not gonna go up there so be mindful we're gonna see a lot of super capacitor you know implemented in our near future now i hope you like this presentation and uh, if so please like it if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would uh, urge you to leave a comment please uh, subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching